From a massive security breach by anonymous hackers to a fingertip allegedly found in a bowl of chili, Wendy's has endured its fair share of scandals. But while some you can blame on poor management, some of them happened due to just plain bad luck. While the case of the chili finger lady is the most famous Wendy scandal, it's also a pop culture icon for fast food hoaxes. The perpetrator even has her own Wikipedia page. In 2005, Anna Ayala walked into a Wendy's in San Jose, California, and ordered a bowl of the fast food chain's iconic chili. She then alleged that she found a severed human finger in the chili and subsequently sued the company. Her allegation created a storm of negative press and investigations that reportedly cost the franchise more than $20 million in lost revenue and damages, temporarily decimating Wendy's reputation. There was a terrible process control failure that would have led to this. It was eventually discovered that Ayala lied about her claims, and she ultimately pleaded guilty to charges of grand larceny. But the wild part is that she planted the finger after her husband acquired it from an acquaintance who had lost it in an industrial accident. So the finger was very much real. Ayala was sentenced to nine years in prison for her attempted fraud and ended up serving four. Her husband was sentenced to 12 years for his role in supplying her the finger. In July 2022, Jenna Vogt's dining experience at her local Wendy's began like any other. She ordered her medium double cheeseburger combo, and all seemed well at first. However, what followed was far from typical. Vogt fell ill within 24 hours of consuming the burger and experienced nausea and gastrointestinal issues. As the symptoms progressively worsened, Vogt was hospitalized and diagnosed with a plethora of medical problems – E. coli, septic shock, sepsis, acute gastrointestinal bleeding, and cerebral hemorrhage. With an extensive list of afflictions and mounting medical bills, Vogt and her husband sued Wendy's for $75,000 in damages, alleging the burger was contaminated because the food was improperly handled. The votes also claimed their marriage suffered due to the incident. The resolution to this lawsuit is still pending as of this video, but if nothing else, this accident serves as a stark reminder of the importance of food safety and quality control. When you go out to eat at your favorite fast food restaurant, you probably don't think that you'll get sick. However, according to a study from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, thousands of unsuspecting consumers come down with serious foodborne illnesses every year. In 2022, Wendy's came under extreme scrutiny when an E. coli outbreak across six states was traced back to the restaurant. The outbreak sickened 109 customers and hospitalized 52. According to interviews by public health officials leading the investigation, more than 80% of the affected people reported eating at Wendy's recently, with many reporting to have eaten sandwiches and burgers topped with romaine lettuce. According to Very Well Health, romaine lettuce is often the culprit of E. coli outbreaks in the food industry due to its proximity to possibly contaminated animal manure. After this discovery, Wendy's was swift to remove the romaine lettuce from all all the affected regions, which likely helped stop the spread of the infection. But since the outbreak ended fairly quickly, the investigation concluded before discovering the exact source. Wendy's went through a particularly rough patch between 2015 and 2016, when the fast food chain was targeted in a massive cyber attack, affecting more than a thousand Wendy's restaurants. Hackers infiltrated Wendy's point-of-sale systems by installing malware, and even after the initial investigation was concluded, another malware variant was discovered. In a statement, Wendy said the malware involved is highly sophisticated and difficult to detect. It was clear to experts, Wendy's lack of effective monitoring and auditing was part of why the breach went unnoticed for so long. These attacks gave the hackers access to highly sensitive customer data, including credit card information, and Wendy's did not come through this crisis unscathed. The company took a massive financial hit when they agreed to pay $50 million to settle all the data breach claims filed against it. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Paycheck Protection Program loans were a saving grace for many workers and companies. But with a lack of oversight and administrative regulation, some people and corporations misused the PPP loans for their own greedy ends. Andrew Levy was a Wendy's franchisee and the CEO of Starboard Group, a firm that oversaw over 100 Wendy's locations across seven states and benefited from $9 million in PPP loans. 
But when Sandy Adler, the vice president of legal affairs and human resources for Starboard Group, became suspicious of how the pandemic relief funds were being used, she blew the whistle. Adler alleged Levy had embezzled a million dollars in PPP loan payments to purchase a home in Montana. On top of this, Adler claimed that Levy wanted to turn her into an accomplice, instructing her to lie to landlords, suppliers, lenders, and creditors that Starboard Group hadn't received any PPP money and couldn't cover their debts. When a lawsuit was finally brought against Levy based on Adler's claims, it demonstrated the critical role that whistleblowers play in exposing wrongdoings involving taxpayer funds. When it comes to people's food, the last thing a fast food employee should do is play with it or the machines that make it. This kind of employee mischief sows distrust in how the industry handles food safety and casts a bad light on the fast food chain as a whole. Whether someone's job is to flip burgers or salt fries, any behavior that subverts our expectations about hygiene is a complete no-go. Unfortunately, one Wendy's employee went viral for just that. When an image of a Wendy's employee guzzling a Frosty directly from the machine took the internet by storm, it reinforced the conception that Wendy's doesn't have a handle on its in-house safety protocols. Strawberry jacuzzi! Ah! <laughs> Realistically, it's impossible to completely prevent these situations from happening, but Wendy's account on X, formerly known as Twitter, responded directly and swiftly to this incident, stating that the employee was fired and that proper procedures would be reinforced. The scary bit about this whole incident is that the scandal only blew up because the perpetrator was photographed and caught, so we really don't know how often employees are doing gross things to the food. There must be something in the water, because time and time again, fast food restaurant employees find themselves doing absolutely ridiculous things. Some folks seem to lack good judgment when it matters most, and will do anything outrageous for five seconds of fame and internet stardom. And while most of us have seen the safety and sanitation policy plastered on bathroom walls, instructing employees to wash their hands before returning to work, the following scandal probably isn't what they meant. In two entirely unrelated incidents, employees decided to take a bath in the industrial sink at Wendy's. The first instance unfolded when a video of an employee washing himself in a Wendy's sink went viral. This bizarre incident shocked customers and led to swift action, with the employees involved immediately being fired. I can guarantee you right now this is probably the dumbest mistake I've ever made. The second case of an employee hopping into the sink for a soak was even worse because their coworkers encouraged the stunt for the sake of a joke. Unsurprisingly, this too made its way onto social media, quickly went viral, and those employees were naturally let go. While humor can brighten the workplace, there are limits. People go to Wendy's for a chocolate frosty or a burger, not a bath time show. News can go viral in the blink of an eye on X, and the app has seen its fair share of drama when Wendy's comes under fire from the public. When a major Wendy's franchisee, James Bodenstedt, was revealed to have made a hefty donation of $440,000 to the Trump Victory Pack for the former president's re-election campaign, the outrage ignited almost immediately. But what really stirred the pot was that Bodenstedt's donation got him a seat at the table during a meeting with Trump and other leaders in the restaurant industry. It's, it's an American dream, sir, and I appreciate everything everyone's doing here to keep that dream going. One ex-user wrote a scathing reply to the news, tweeting, There's always five guys, and so far, none of them are racist. But the backlash was more than just a social media storm. It was a reputation hit. In recent years leading up to the incident, the Wendy's X account had become a symbol of the brand's personality with its clever banter. They had even instituted National Roast Day, where the brand would roast competitors and fans with humor and wit. But this time, Wendy's was on the receiving end of the roasts. X users, many of whom were fans of the brand, called for a boycott. Soon, the hashtag Wendy's is over party started trending. But the whole debacle proves that in the age of social media, a brand's reputation is as crucial as the quality of its products. In 2023, an Illinois Wendy's found itself in a pickle when the public discovered it was unlawfully collecting employee fingerprints. Here's the scoop. Wendy's used biometric clocks to scan employee fingerprints when they clocked in and out and when they used the cash register and point-of-sale systems. While it may initially seem cool and high-tech, there's always a catch to digital technology. It can be grossly invasive. Wendy's didn't properly disclose how this data was being handled and used, in direct violation of the state's Biometric Information Privacy Act. 
Some may wonder what the big deal is, since companies use biometric information all the time to streamline their processes and promote efficiency within a fast-paced working environment. But fingerprints are unique, permanent identifiers. Unlike ID cards and key fobs, you can't replace or misplace your fingerprints. Once your fingerprint data is out there, it's out there, making the privacy risks much higher. In recent years, there's been a lot of discourse surrounding allegations of modern slavery in the fast food supply chain. As a result, farm workers have taken to the streets to protest these human rights violations believed to be enabled by corporations. To combat these unjust working conditions, the Fair Food Program was launched in 2011 to ensure farm workers receive fair wages and that farms are up to par with safety and operational standards. Many of the nation's biggest fast food chains have joined the Fair Food Program since its inception, including Burger King, Subway, McDonald's, Chipotle, KFC, and Taco Bell. Wendy's infamous refusal to join the program over the past decade has sparked a boycott movement and other efforts to pressure the company to join. But as a Wendy's spokesperson put it, Wendy's does not participate in the fair food program because there is no nexus between the program and our supply chain. As of this video, it's unclear when or if Wendy's will ever cave to the pressure surrounding this issue. Phone scams can happen to anyone, and two incidents involving Wendy's employees are stark reminders of our collective need to exercise extreme caution against these kinds of scammers. It's not the newest swindle in the world, just new to some. They bait you with something bogus, and they say something worthless. In St. John's County, Florida, a 73-year-old Wendy's restaurant employee fell victim to a scam where the caller impersonated a Wendy's corporate manager. The caller instructed the employee to take cash from the restaurant safe and wire it to her bank account so the caller could withdraw it to purchase a new sanitation unit for the store. Trusting the supposed authority on the other end of the line and promised a $500 reward for her cooperation, the employee complied with the request. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the scammer ended up stealing the money from her bank account. During the investigation into the incident, the employee was suspended from her job. In a similar incident in Jackson, Michigan, a Wendy's manager received a call that seemed legitimate. The caller urged them to withdraw money from the safe and purchase prepaid credit cards at Rite Aid. Believing this person to be a corporate financial officer, the manager complied and shared all the card details with the scammer. The manager later became suspicious and called the police, but it may have been too late to recover the money.